I. Lucy, what's wrong? I. 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 Lucy, what's happening? I. I am pregnant. Are you in any pain, dear? No, I don't think so. Okay, that's good. What's happening? Why am I in a hospital? Why am I pregnant? Lucy, listen to me carefully. You just woke up from a coma. Coma? How long have I been? Unconscious. Yeah. For about three months now. What is the last thing you remember? And then suddenly I felt a sharp pain in my head. And then after that, I don't remember what happened. That is absolutely normal. You had a severe head injury. So now you have post-traumatic amnesia. Well, what does that mean? That she won't remember anything that happened? For now. But the memory should come back in the next couple of weeks. Wait, how did I get into the hospital? Did my boyfriend take me? Actually, I'm... Could I talk to you for a second? Yeah, sure. We'll be right back, dear. You can't say anything that would stress her out right now. But I was the one who brought her here. She, she would have died if I hadn't found her. Please keep your voice down. The walls are pretty thin here. I, I can't just lie to her. Yes, you can. She just woke up from a coma. She has amnesia. The last thing she needs right now is stress. Otherwise, she might fall back into a coma. If the thought of her boyfriend makes her happy, let her think he brought her here. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do it for her. You do that. Do you like them? Yeah, they're my favorite. Well, you're lucky then. You've been getting a new bouquet every single day. Really? I never thought Chris could be so romantic. Actually, it's... Yeah, no, nothing yet. So, did Chris come visit me yesterday? Is he coming today? Uh, um... I don't... Uh, Chris! <laughs> oh, my baby girl, I was so worried. I heard you finally woke up. How are you feeling? I'm fine. Do you remember what happened? N no, my memory is still a bit fuzzy. How's your baby? The baby is doing just fine. We've been monitoring its development the whole time she was here, and it seems like the fall did not affect the baby at all. Well, you must be really happy about that, huh? Yeah, oh, I'm delighted. I was just informed by the hospital that Miss Lucy Weston woke up. Who's this man? A root of me. I'm a detective, Joseph Simmons. I'm investigating your case, Miss West. I'd just like to ask you a few questions. Is that all right? Mr. Simmons, Miss Weston just woke up. I don't think it's a good idea to stress her out with the details of the accident right now. I wish this could wait. But we were suspected that someone deliberately pushed Miss Weston down the stairs because of her condition. You mean her pregnancy? That's right. It would be considered an assault or even attempted murder on two people. So can I ask you a few questions? Fine. But if I see that it affects Lucy too much, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Of course. 
Can you tell me what happened before you went to, into coma? Unfortunately, um, I don't remember much. I think I was falling, and then suddenly I felt a sharp pain in my head. But that's pretty much it. I don't remember anything else. Do you remember that someone pushed you? N no. You really don't remember anything. Do you remember what you were doing before the fall? I'm sorry. Okay, I think that's enough for today. If you want to ask more questions, I'm afraid you're going to have to come back another day. Very well. I'll see you in a few days, Miss West. Hope your recovery goes well. Thank you. I want to ask him some questions, but I'll come back to visit you tomorrow, okay? Okay. Mr. Simmons. Uh, I was wondering, don't you think it's a little suspicious that Lewis... Lewis? Yeah, the guy who was with us in the room, I think it's quite suspicious that he was the only one who saw Lucy injured. I mean, he claimed that he got there after the accident, but don't you think that it could be possible that he pushed her and then brought her to the hospital to look innocent? I don't know. Since no one else was in the house, and all the neighbors were at work during that accident. And we don't know exact time when Louis got to the house or if anyone else was there. The only thing we can do now is to hope that Miss Weston gets her memory back. And if she doesn't? I'm afraid we won't be able to get any answers. But then, then Louis would be the only suspect. But why would he have pushed her? He doesn't have any motive. <laughs> he does. What do you mean? Uh, yeah, he has been in love with Lucy way before her and I started dating. <laughs> Maybe he just couldn't stand the idea that she's having a baby with me. That is some interesting information, Chris. I'll get back to you if I need any more details. Thank you. Any time, officer. You're a liar. You were the one who pushed her down. At first, I like, maybe... <laughs> you thought what, little boy? That she fell by herself. I knew that she was going to meet up with you, but I never thought that you could do something like that. <laughs> but I, I saw how scared you were when the detective was questioning you. How happy you felt once you realized that she doesn't remember anything. So what? <laughs> You've got no proof I did anything. You can't even prove I met you her. You pushed her down because she refused to get an abortion. Eventually, she will remember everything. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I'll have to make sure that she doesn't. Soon, she stopped caring about my visits. It broke my heart seeing them so happy together. But I couldn't risk her falling back into a coma. The only thing I could do is wait and hope that her memory will come back soon. I'm sorry, it's now not a good time. I think it was him. I clearly remember his face in front of me. Mr. Lewis, do you have anything to confess? No, I, I, I promise I didn't do anything. 
I'm sorry, Mr. Lewis, but now all the evidence is against you. I'll have to arrest you. Arrest me? You are now the main suspect in an assault against Miss Weston, an attempted murder on her unborn child. What? What does it even mean? If charged, you'll be facing at least five years in prison. What did you tell her? Nothing that wasn't true. I'm not going to prison because of your lies. You are the one who pushed her down the stairs. So, so prove it. Why would I ever hurt my girl or my baby? Lucy! Lucy, stay with me. Lucy? This is not my baby! It's not mine! I went to her place and I found her unconscious. That doesn't mean I did anything. You're a liar. You ran away. She would have died if I hadn't found her. Yeah, you're okay. Lucy. Lucy. Lucy! Now why do you believe that Chris pushed her? When I called Lucy that day, she told me that she was pregnant. She was planning to invite Chris to tell him. I called her a bit later and she wasn't answering the phone. And then I went to her place and I, I saw that she was laying on the floor unconscious. You're not making any sense. Why would I hurt someone I love? Lucy? Lucy, can you hear me? Stay away. Stay away. Stay away. I never loved you! And she's back. Lucy, I'm so sorry. Please tell me everything's okay. M Mr. Simmons, why are you allowing this criminal so close to the victim? I'm not sure if he's the one who did it anymore. I remember everything. It was you who pushed me down the stairs because I didn't want to have an abortion. <laughs> but you just said that Lewis pushed you and now you change your mind? I mean, can we even trust your memory? It doesn't seem to be very reliable. I'm not sure if we can trust your memory, but we definitely can trust love. <laughs> love? I haven't heard of bigger nonsense. See, that just proves my point. I can see how much Louis cares for Miss Weston. He immediately ran to her when he thought that she was in pain. He would have never done anything to hurt her. And you, Chris? He just wanted Louis to make her look guilty. He didn't even bother to ask Miss Weston if she's okay. Unfortunately for you, Miss Weston remembered everything what happened during that accident. She will be the main witness in court. Hey, 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 hey. Man, you know. You're gonna have to explain yourself in front of the judge. I want a lawyer! You know these flowers? Lewis was the one who brought them to you every single day. Thanks. Hey, look, um, I'm sorry. I never thought he would do such a thing to me. It's okay. All that matters to me is that you and your baby are both safe. That's so sweet. Um, I don't even know why I was so focused on somebody who almost tried to kill me when the guy who cared most about me was always by my side. I'll always be by your side. Abigail, 
mom, dad, it's not. I think, I think I'm pregnant. Look at me so stupid. Who did this to you? Nobody. I mean, my, my boyfriend. Look, it, it's not a big deal, okay? What do you mean it's not a big deal? Do you have any idea how this is gonna affect us? What is everyone gonna think? You know Abigail, this is a small town. Our friends from church, our neighbors. Your dad can lose his job. I didn't even know you had a boyfriend. You're just a kid. Didn't you always want a grandchild? Yes, but not from a pregnant teenager. What's his name? I'm going to kill him. Dad, please stop. It's not his fault. You are not going to keep that thing. What? You're not ready for this. You're in a high school. Who's gonna pay for it? We can't afford another child. Let's just think about this. She can go to my sister's place until she gives birth, and then we can take the child for adoption. But what we will tell to everyone when they ask where she is? We'll think of something. Maybe we can say she's at the boarding school. No! I don't want to go. I want to stay here. And I don't want to give up the baby. I want to keep it. Abigail, you need to be rational here. No. I'm keeping it. You want to keep? Fine. You want to throw everything away to be a struggling teen mom? And get out. Gabe, please. Get out now! Babe, I need to talk to you. Yeah, okay, just one minute. I'm almost finished with the game. Buster, it's important. Okay. What's up? What is it? It's a pregnancy test. For who? God, Buster, it's mine. I'm pregnant. No, it's not mine. What are you? Of course it is. I haven't been with anyone else. Look, I just got into my dream school and I'm leaving in just a couple of months. Okay, but what about the baby? What about me? Look, I don't know. Look, I don't even care. Just get an abortion. I don't want to. I want to keep it. You it's have to. You just get... Bro, calm down. Let go of her. Don't tell me what to do. Listen, if my parents find out, they're going to kill me. Buster, I don't even know where to go for that. Look, just look it up. This is your problem, not my problem. I don't want an abortion. I want to oh. keep it. It's my baby. Our baby. Our baby? You're kidding. This is your baby. I don't even want it. And just get out. Look, no, we never even think. Never even liked you anyway. Fine. Fine. Screw you then. I'll take care of our baby by myself. Dude, you're such an asshole. What do you want? I don't want your pity. Do you have a place to stay? No. My parents kicked me out and, uh, Buster's useless. You can come stay with me if you want. What? Won't, won't Buster be mad? I don't care. Plus, it's cold outside. No. No, I'll find somewhere else. No, your problem, Axel. Look, my parents helped me with my rent, so it's not a big deal. I'm not just going to leave you here. You can stay with me until you figure everything out. I still feel bad. And what are you going to do? Sleep on the streets. If you want to pay me back someday, you can. But... 
for now, just don't worry about it. Uh. Isn't, uh... Worrying bad for the baby? God. I don't even know. I, I don't know anything about being pregnant. Okay, let's go then and we can figure it out together. One day we'll fly away. Just take my hand. Dreams are so much it felt weird to live with my ex boyfriend's best friend. So, this is a new place. Nothing, nothing special. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Hey, can you take that? But I had nowhere else to go, and Axel was so nice. Please, uh, sit make yourself comfortable. Sit. Thanks. He was so selfless. Buster was never like that. Soon a few days turned into a month and I started feeling like I actually lived there. Not like I was just some pregnant loser taking up his bed. We were spending a lot of time together. It was nice. Here you go. Oh God, thanks. Like the berries? Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe it was all the pregnancy hormones, but I realized I had feelings for him. Yeah. Well, what are you doing here? Babe, I messed up. I should have been there for you and the baby. Our, our baby. But you, you said... What about the college? I'm still gonna go to college, but I wanna help you too as well. My, my family found out about the baby and they want me to step in. So if I step in, you know, I can, I can still go. Oh my God. Your parents are threatening to not pay for your tuition, is that it? That's why you're here. Screw you. Leave me and my baby alone. Look, I never wanted this. You're ruining my life! I think you better get out of here now. I don't want to get to a thing now. This is seriously the best you can do. Some pregnant slut. My sloppy seconds, huh? Just chill out. I... No! Guys! Guys, stop! I need the police now! Now! Hi, we are Abigail's parents. May we come in? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. What are you doing here? We should have reached out sooner. I'm sorry about what happened. How we acted. We were ready immediately. We didn't know where you were. It's been almost two years. I know we didn't handle things the right way. No, we miss you so much. <laughs> and we want to be in your life. I know. It's going to take time to turn back your trust. Please. Give us a chance to be better parents. We love you. Just please give us a chance. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that chance. This is Daniel. <laughs> Looks so cute. Hey, Daniel. What you doing? What are you playing with? What are you wearing clean my face with it? <laughs> I guess. It's so cute. Yes. Let's 
crown and breathe in and push. We're almost there. You do this. Just breathe in. One more push. Congratulations. You have a beautiful baby girl. Would you like to cut the umbilical cord, sir? Oh, no thanks. That's all you. We did it. I mean, you did it. We're parents, Cindy. Our sweet little angel's here. I'm really thirsty. Could I get some water? Of course, of course. No, you're right. There is something strange. She should be moving her legs more than that. Is there something wrong? Well, we can't know for sure until we run some tests, but her legs don't seem to be moving like they should. Are you telling me she's not going to be able to use her legs? Ma'am, please calm down. You've been through a lot. Yes, there is a possibility that your daughter might not be able to use her legs. They are moving a little. She might move them, but she will lose the ability through time. We're not sure yet. We'll need to run some tests, but for now, she seems perfectly healthy. Perfectly healthy? How can you say that when she's going to be some handicapped freak? Handicapped freak? Cindy, how can you say that about our little girl? Can I hold her now? Is this possible? We had monthly checkups. Yep. She was supposed to come out normal. Ma'am, please calm down. There are hundreds of undetectable factors that we are not sure about until the baby is born. You don't know for sure. Sorry, sir. I will need to get the baby back. We will need to get her first vaccines and then do our checkups. What a sweet little angel. Little Emma. We decided to call you Emma. Do you like it? Thank you, nurse. Nurse Grant. Yes, doctor? Please keep an eye on the mother while we're gone. She doesn't need stitches, but she's still bleeding. Understood. Cindy, you just gave life to a beautiful, sweet little girl. How can you call her a handicapped freak just because of an issue with her legs? Isn't that what she would be? No. With or without the use of her legs, I love her with all my heart already. Don't you? Cindy, when you said you wanted a child, wasn't it to love it unconditionally, no matter what? If they would have only detected it early on, I could have had an abortion, so we could have a normal baby later on. What? Are you saying you would have had an abortion and, and aborted this perfectly healthy baby just because she might not be able to walk? She's not healthy, Ed. She's disabled. Cindy, maybe if you hold her in your arms, your heart won't be so frozen. I just don't understand you. My parents are out in the out in the waiting room. I can't wait to tell them how happy I am to be a father. I hope you'll reconsider how you feel about this. All right, let's take a look at you, okay? Oh, good. Looks like your, uh, your bleeding stopped. Let's go ahead and get your pad changed. I can't have a handicapped baby. I just can't do it. Come on, she's not gonna be handicapped. She's gonna be handicapable. You'd be surprised. No, no, I wouldn't be. You don't get it. I don't want her and I would do anything. And I mean anything to I would pay. Nurse? Hmm? How much would I have to pay you to switch babies? What? Any baby. Any baby that looks similar to her but is a healthy baby. I'm sure you could switch up tags, couldn't you? 
I'm sorry, no, that, that's... I could lose my career over that. There's security protocols. I'll give you $50,000. What? Pass me my checkbook. I'll write you a check. You cash it out. No questions asked. You get me a healthy baby, and the money's yours. Are you serious? I mean, would your husband not figure out something weird with the money, or...? He has his own money. This is mine. We don't have much time. I know you don't get paid much here. And you do have those student loans, don't you? And you want a house one day. Get me a healthy baby, and the $50,000 are yours. Well, you know, it's halfway around the world, but at least you made it here safely. I'm glad you're Dad, here. Dad, got some mail. Emma, you're home. Look who's here to visit from Australia. Leo. How's my favorite little princess? I'm great. Had a few weeks off. And I bought you something. Whoa, this is amazing. Ah, uh, there's that smile I love to see. So tell me, how was school today? It was fun. Say you saved my butt in math class. I was so lost. She's a pink genius. She understands everything. And she won a silver medal at her race last weekend. It's amazing. I don't know how she does it. Yeah, you're gonna have to remind me. Uh, who's Sadie again? Oh, she's Emma's best friend from school. Ah. Emma, remind me. I still need to thank look <sighs> Miss F Sadie's mom for the vegetables she brought us from the garden. She's a really nice woman. Ever since her husband passed away last year, we've been helping each other a lot. Oh, uh, Dad, this letter was on the porch for you. Who sends letters nowadays? Hmm. Well, listen, let's just, let's head on in, on, uh, guys. Come on in. Come on. Tell me, tell me more about your mind. It says this is from Elizabeth Grant. No idea who that is. here for just a second. I forgot my files. Cindy, don't you at least have time for a cup of tea? Leo's here. I'm sorry. I'm running late. I'll catch you guys later. It's all right, honey. You'll be back later. Okay. I'll just go to my room. Things aren't getting any better at home, are they? No. Cindy just works all the time. It's not like she has to. We're not poor. I don't know. To be honest, it feels like maybe she's avoiding something at home. And you're sure, um, she's not having an affair? Pretty sure. I mean, she's always at work when I call. And I have friends who work in the same division. They assure me that she's always at work. I just feel really bad for Emma. It's so clear to me that she wants to have some attention from her mother, but Cindy doesn't seem to notice her. She's got to be blind. I could notice it straight away. I just don't, I don't understand. Why would Cindy not want to spend time with her daughter? Emma's such a sweet kid. Yeah, no, absolutely. You remember when she was born? At the hospital, at first, they said that there was something wrong with her legs and she might gradually lose the ability to use them. Cindy was so stressed. She kept going on and on about not wanting to have a paraplegic for a child. Anyway, they ran some more tests. Turned out they were wrong. Everything's fine. <laughs> I remember that night. You called me about five or six times with updates at every turn. Yeah. Hey, thanks for being there. Well, Cindy was relieved at first, but Something happened. I mean, just shortly after, it just seemed like she didn't want to bond with the child. She wouldn't breastfeed. I was always the one having to change diapers, having to put him into bed. She even could have taken maternity leave, but said she didn't want to. What? 
That's nuts. And with all the work that you did, with no maternity to leave, nor nothing. Yeah, that's all right. I loved every minute of raising Emma. That's why I wanted to be a dad. Mm. But with Cindy, she stopped wanting to be a mom the minute Emma was born. And so she became a workaholic. And let's just say, you can't have much of a relationship with someone who's barely there. Mm. I don't even know if she cares about us anymore. I'll get to this later. Hey, I'm hungry. Let's go get some dinner. Let's get first. Yeah. Hi, hi, I'm home. Hey, for once you're home from work before dark. I'm sorry, I know I said I was gonna come home earlier, but I got another project and I just kind of, I know. you know. I know, Cindy. You always take on another project. Yeah. But you wouldn't believe the kind of bonus they'll give me for this one. What I do believe? is how upset your daughter was when she found out that, yet again, she wouldn't even get 10 minutes with her mother. I'll make it up to her. You've been saying that for 10 years. Last year, you didn't even go on vacation with us. And the year before that, you worked in the ho hotel the whole time and ignored us. Yeah, and who paid for that vacation? I did. Yeah, well, what do you want from me then? What do I want from you? I want us to be a family. We've been drifting apart ever since Emma was born. When did you get this letter? I just showed up today. Emma brought it in. Why? Did you read it yet? No, I, I looked at it, but I don't even know who Elizabeth Grant is. <laughs> hey, what'd you do that for? It's just not important. Stupid. You're having an affair, is that it? No. Look, if you're having an affair, just tell me the truth. You have to trust me on this one, Ed. I'm not having an affair. But no good can come from reading this letter. Cindy, at this point, I just don't think I could trust you. I just can't. So you either give me that letter, or it's time for us to start talking about divorce. Okay. We'll get the divorce papers ready in the morning. You can sleep on the couch. I'm going to bed. Give me that letter. Hey! Give that back. Are you done? You want to hit me again? Don't be shy. I can take it. You really are trash, Leo. What is going on? Oh, nothing, sweetheart. I'll explain tomorrow. Just go back to your room, OK? OK. Good night, Mom. Good night, Mom. Good night. And I'm leaving this house. I'm not staying here another minute. I'm sorry you had to deal with that, Leo. Uh, it's all good, mate. Yeah, it's all good. Look, I think we should just read this letter. Yeah, we gotta get into this. Dear Ed Turner, you won't remember me, but for the last 11 years, I've not been able to forget the names of you, your wife, and the girl you've raised. My name is Elizabeth Grant. The night your daughter was born, I was on duty as a nurse at your wife's side. That night, after you walked out of the room, your wife Cindy offered me $50,000 to switch your baby with a similar looking healthy baby girl. I didn't want to, but I couldn't turn down such a huge amount with all the economic difficulties I faced. I've always regretted what I did. This whole time, I remembered your name and the name of the mother whose baby I switched with yours. I recently learned that I have cancer. 
and only have a few weeks left to live. I have to do what I feel is right and tell you the truth before it's too late. The girl you've raised is the daughter of a woman called Luna Foster. She lives in your city. This woman has also raised your biological daughter. I'll write a letter to her as well to tell her the whole story. I'll make sure to tell her you were in no way involved in this and that the only guilty ones are your wife, Cindy Turner. And myself. I hope I'm doing the right thing now. Though I know it will not make up for what wrong I have done. My most sincere apologies. Elizabeth Grant. We need to call the police. You're right. I need the police. Where the hell do you think you're going? So I guess you read the letter. And you know about the baby. That's right. And the police are on their way. No, God. Cindy. How could you have done this? We could have been so happy. Do you really want to know why I couldn't accept a handicapped daughter? Fine. I'll tell you. If you only met my family, which you haven't, because I don't talk to them, you would understand. I never told you about my sister, Meg, but she was paraplegic from birth. All my childhood, we always had to adapt to her. We couldn't go to tons of places that weren't wheelchair accessible. We could never play together. She couldn't play sports. I never had fun with her, even though my parents forced me to spend time with her. I couldn't play with normal kids because of her. I couldn't stand not doing what I wanted to. Like going swimming. They would force me to take her to the beach, but she would just be a bother. I wish she would just disappear. So I started ignoring her. Pretend she wasn't there. And when we got older, I eventually erased her from my life. And that's why. That's why I couldn't accept having a daughter who's handicapped. And then, and then it was like I couldn't bond with a new baby feel right. I couldn't hold Emma without thinking about the baby I gave birth to or more yeah. about Meg. Emma is not mine and I can't pretend that she is. Being with her feels very wrong and I can't chase the feeling away. So I buried myself in work and I try to ignore it, but nothing seems to work. Still, it's hard for me to understand how you could have been so insensitive with your sister, or, or how you could have pushed us away either. And poor Emma, you shut her out completely because she's a daily reminder of the horrible thing you did, and you don't even know the rest of it. What's that? Her daughter, her biological daughter. She was raised by Luna Foster. Her name's Sadie Foster. She's Emma's best friend in school. She helps Emma in math, English, history. Straight A student. She participates in wheelchair competitions. She's been in marathons. She's one of the top athletes in the school. I know her. She's a terrific girl. But would you see how terrific she was if you met her? When she was born, you wouldn't even give her the chance she, she deserved. You weren't ready to love her the way every child should be loved. But every child deserves unconditional love, Cindy. Emma, true? Emma. This, this is too much. Emma, wait. 
back here. See me. Watch out for the car. Hey, Cindy. Look, uh, you might not believe this, but I'm glad you're doing a little better after your accident. I will never walk again. I'll go to jail. You could have died. I could have. But instead, I'll never walk again. Look, I, I hate that all, all this has happened, but uh, you should be grateful to be alive. I, uh... I just came down here to get you to sign these divorce papers. <laughs> so, uh... We'll be seeing each other at the, the custody hearing and the hearing for alimony as well, but I just wanted to ask you, do you want to see Emma again before they sentence you? I don't want to bring her down here if you're just going to ignore her. No. I don't want to see her. And what about Sadie? No, I don't want to see her either. You don't want to meet your biological daughter? No, and I don't want to look at you anymore either. Okay, okay. Let's go. It's really a shame, you know? Sadie is... Uh, she's truly an amazing girl. Just go away! You know, you don't have to push. I want to, it's fun. Whatever. Can you believe that we're like, going to be sisters? I don't know. It's a little weird, but not really. I'm happy. Me too. What a strange destiny. But all's well that ends well, don't you think? Hey guys, what did you think about the video? Do you have a similar exciting story to tell? Let us know in the comments. Maybe we'll use it in our next video. We're publishing new short stories every week, so be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell to be the first to see the new Secret Diary.